Let's carry on thinking about the structure of the kidney and then I want to go on to relate the overall large scale, that is the macroscopic structure of the kidney, to the microscopic structure of the kidney because the nephrons are the functional units of the kidney and they are microscopic. But first of all, let's think about the overall scale of the kidney. So here we have a kidney as we probably recognise the shape by now. And we know that there, are a renal, there is a renal cortex and a renal medulla and that the medulla is formed into medullary pyramids. So here we have some medullary pyramids. Pyramid shaped pyramidal triangular shaped structures. Three dimensionally they look like a pyramid. So we have the cortex on the outside, the medullary pyramids and the cortical columns between the pyramids. Now, the kidney is essentially, in one respect, hollow. There's a hollowed out area in the middle. So in the middle here, there's a hollowed out area. And this hollowed out area here is called the renal sinus. The renal sinus. So we've got the capsule around the outside, then the cortex, the cortical columns, the medulla, and the sinus. And this area here, from here to here, where things go in and out of the kidney, that area there is called the renal hilum. The renal hilum. Now the urine, as it's produced, actually passes down through the medullary pyramids. So as urine is produced, it's going to go down the medullary pyramids. And it's going to go towards the end of the medullary pyramid here. These nipple-shaped papillae. Papillae is nipple-shaped. So there's papillae there, there's a papillae there. So the urine's actually coming out. Having been produced in the kidney, it's coming out in this area here. And of course, we don't want urine leaking all over the place, so we have to have some way of collecting it. So what's happening here is that there are tube-like structures coming off the renal pyramids like this. So as the urine is produced, it's going to pass into these tube-like structures. And these are the renal calyces. So that would be a calyx. Collectively, they are calyces. And these initial calyces are relatively small, but they can join up to form larger calyces. In practice, of course, there's more medullary pyramids than this. I'm just simplifying it for the sake of the diagram. So here we see two minor calyces have converged to form a major calyx. Again here, minor calyces forming a major calyx. So that means that the urine is going to pass from a minor calyx through into a major calyx. And then all of this is all going to, it is all going to collect and an enlarged area called the renal pelvis. So this is an enlarged area called the renal pelvis. So the major calyces drain into the renal pelvis here. And then the renal pelvis is going to exit the kidney at the start of the ureters. So the urine is going to, go, going to go from the renal pelvis down in the ureter. And the ureter has muscular peristaltic walls taking the urine down to the bladder. So the urine is produced between the cortex and the medulla. 
It passes down ducts called collecting ducts and eventually larger ducts at the base here called papillary ducts. These empty out into a minor calyx, into a major calyx, into the pelvis and on down into the ureter. So we see that the calyceal system and the renal pelvis is contained within this hollowed out renal sinus. And of course the renal artery is going to take blood through the hilum, through the renal sinus, into the tissue of the kidney, which is the parenchyma of the kidney. So the parenchyma is the medulla and the cortex together. The blood is going to be filtered, urine is going to be formed, and then blood is going to drain from the parenchyma of the kidney back into venous vessels in the sinus, eventually draining into the renal vein. So that's sort of the overall structure of the kidney.